Asylum log, start date 2005. Snake saves President Baker from Foxhound member Revolver Ocelot. However, he has already given away the detonation code. The only thing that can stop the launch of the nuclear warhead is the detonation code emergency override key held by Merrill or Metal Gear Chief Engineer Dr. Hal Emmerich. After talking to Snake, Baker also dies from a heart attack. Snake refers to the codec frequency on the back of the CD case and tries contacting Merrill. You're watching The Gamer's Asylum, and I'm your host, Len Soon, and this is how you do play Metal Gear Solid 1. Oh yes, and I love how every time I start up the PS1 uh, emulator on this PS3, I gotta go back to... Oh, no, 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 no. Controller settings. Analog mode. Very simple. What a way to start the LP, huh? Anyways, guys, as you could tell from the little mission briefing at the start anytime you load the game up, it tells you what the hell to do. Now, for those of you who may be a little bit confused as to what it means when it says the back of the CD case, many people actually thought that it was, you know, like, do I use the, the optical disc containing the exercise data? Is there some way to look at the back of it and find that codec frequency that Meryl is hijacked. Speaking of which, how the fuck did she get the codec? She stole she stole it from a guard. But if it stimulates the small bones of your ear, isn't it connected to your inner ear? I mean, like, what the fuck? Did she rip the guard's ear out? Well, no. Um, the actual location of it is not on the back of the optical disc case. It's literally on the back of the plate... PlayStation CD case that it came in. And, you know, I have, I'm currently playing on the re release version from the Essentials collection. And the frequency is actually on the back of the full Essentials box. So, luckily, I still have that. Uh, for those of you playing on the PSN, I don't know how the fuck you would know. You might be shit out of luck. But, anyways, the code in question is 140.15. And let the story commence. Let's talk to that red haired vixen. Who are you? I was really impressed with the way you busted yourself out of there. The one from the prison? You're the colonel's niece. Meryl, right? No, it's not him. Just exactly who are you? I'm the fool that your uncle sent all alone into the middle of this whole mess. You came by yourself? You think you're some kind of one-man army? I don't need lectures. You're just like your uncle, you know? How do you know my uncle? We go way back. What's your name? My name's not important. Aha. Uh -huh. Could you be Snake? Are you Solid Snake? That's what some people call me. The legendary Solid Snake? You? Why are you taking your Sorry mask off? Sorry about before. I wasn't sure if you were one of the good guys. But I knew you were. How? It's your eyes. My eyes? They're not soldiers' eyes. And they're rookies' eyes, right? No. They're beautiful, compassionate eyes. Oh, just what I'd expect from the legendary Solid Snake. You trying to sweep me off my feet? Don't worry. You'll land back on them once you meet me. The reality is no match for the legend, I'm afraid. Oh, I don't believe that. Very humble, Why snake. did you look so surprised when you saw my face? Because you look just like him. You mean the terrorist leader, Liquid Snake? Yeah. You know him? You're not brothers, are you? I have no family. So what's the deal, then? Who knows? Why don't you ask him? But first, I want some information. You were involved in this exercise from the beginning. What exactly happened here? I'm sorry. I was captured along with President Baker right after the terrorist attack. That's okay. But what is this place? I don't think it's just a nuclear weapons disposal facility. Boy, oh boy, it's just like them. Nobody told you anything, did they? Okay. You see, this place isn't really for disposing nuclear weapons. This base is owned and operated by a dummy corporation of arms tech. This is a civilian base? Right. For the development of Metal Gear. Colonel. Foxhound and the Next Generation Special Forces were called here for the test launching of a dummy nuclear warhead. Why Foxhound? Because they're a special ops group used to handling top secret missions. They figured they could help keep it all hush-hush. But we must have fired nuclear warheads before. Why just this time? 
I heard it was because this was to be a final test before the formal adoption of the Metal Gear program. Well, that's what I heard, anyway. Uh, sounds kind of fishy. So what do you think the terrorists want? Mm, sorry. I'm not sure. I was captured with President Baker right after the revolt started. Oh, yeah. That's when he gave you the detonation code override keys, right? That's right. Amazing you were able to keep him hidden from the guards. Well, women have more hiding places than men. Oh! Anyway, you met Baker, huh? How's he holding up? He's dead. What? Heart attack. Same as the DARPA chief. The chief died from a heart attack too? Yeah. Was either of them sick or anything? No, not that I heard of. Well, I don't believe in coincidences. Something funny's going on. Hmm, sounds like it. But I have no idea what. Me neither. Yet. Do you know the person who designed Metal Gear? You mean Dr. Emmerich? Yes. Is he still alive? Probably. He should be in the research lab in the second floor basement of the nuclear warhead storage building to the north. Second floor basement? Yeah, that's where his lab is. I think they're forcing him to work on the nuclear launching program. So they'll need him alive until that's done anyway. Then we'd better do something before he finishes. You're right. In case we can't override the detonation code in time, I need to ask him how to destroy Metal Gear. You plan to take that thing on by yourself, Snake? It won't be the first time. Nor the second. <sighs> What's the best way to get to the building where the doctor is being held? There's a cargo door on the first floor of this building that leads to the north. What's the security level of the door there? Five. But it's okay. I've got a level five card. Well, I've got to go save the doctor. You should go. I'm going with you. No way. You're still too green. I want you to hide somewhere. I'm not green. Oh, yes, you are. Yeah, look at the codex screen. Of course you're you green, Meryl. just one second in front of your enemy and it's all over. Good luck doesn't last forever. I don't know what happened. I just couldn't pull the trigger right away. I never had any problems in training. But when I thought about my bullets tearing through those soldiers' bodies, I, I hesitated. Shooting at targets and shooting at living, breathing people are different. Ever since I was a little girl, I always dreamed about being a soldier. Every day of my life, I've trained my mind and body for the one day when I could finally see some real action. And now... So what now? You want to quit? I can't quit. I can't allow myself to quit now. Listen, Meryl. Everybody feels sick the first time they kill someone. Unfortunately, killing is one of those things that gets easier the more you do it. Very deep. In a war, all of mankind's worst emotions, worst traits come out. It's easy to forget what a sin is in the middle of a battlefield. But this isn't a war. It's a terrorist action. You're just a little jumpy from the combat high. The adrenaline in your bloodstream is starting to thin out. Just take it easy. But I learned all about combat high at the academy. We'll talk about it later. For now, just think about keeping yourself alive. If I get out of here alive, I'll think about that other stuff. Okay. Let me try to say this another way. Stay the hell out of my way. <laughs> You're a real bastard. Just like my uncle said. Huh. I told you. The real me is no match for the legend. <laughs> it looks like you were right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Snake. I'll be a good girl. We'll link up after I grab the doctor. Then we'll take care of the detonation code override. Gotcha. But listen, I know this area better than you. Call me if you have any questions. Be careful, okay? After I open up the cargo door, I'll contact you. Alright, so, um, I do apologize for, for keeping my, you know, if, if people want me to constantly commentate like I did over the, the story of, uh, <laughs> uh, Metroid Other M. There's one difference between this game and Metroid Other M. Uh, this is a good fucking game with... A story that still sometimes gets at me, even af years after I've played it for the first time. So, you know, I, sometimes I just want to sit back and watch as well. Anyways, uh, this is what turns some people off from some of this game sometimes. Uh, the, the fact that the codex sequences are so goddamn long. And admittedly they are. And they get really monotonous in, in certain later games. But, um... 
you know, the nice thing about it is if you're playing it, if you don't like it, if you're not really in it for the story, well, number one, you're, you're missing out on, like, 70% of the game. And number two, skip it! Seriously, fucking skip it! Don't complain about it, like, for 90% of your playthrough, Phil! Anyways. Oh, god damn it. So this is here... Yeah. Tank hanger. Snake, I unlocked the cargo door for you. Thanks. Where are you? Where I can see ya. Don't move around too much. Don't worry, I'm disguised in this enemy uniform. Why'd you take the mask off? You won't off be for you? long with the way you walk. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, nothing. Listen, Snake, the cargo door is like an airlock. It's equipped with infrared sensors. Be careful. If an intruder is sensed, gas is released. Gas? Okay, so we'll meet at the nuclear warhead storage building. Wait, you said you'd stay put and be a good girl. I changed my mind. Don't get careless. That's when things always turn sour. Sorry, but this is the only way I can figure out whether or not I'm cut out to be a soldier. I gotta get my hands dirty. These guys are professionals. You're gonna get yourself killed. See you there. Oy, oy, oy. What is it about these tomboys in Metal Gear games, I swear? But anyways, here we are in the tank hangar, and what a tank hangar it is. So tank hangary that there's... wait, what? There's a tank missing. That's great news, isn't it? Alright, this is where I want to be for right now. I don't remember how this guy works in this game. I know how he works in Twin Snakes, and I know for a fact that he, like... This guard right here, who's sleeping. Does he stay asleep the whole goddamn time, is the question. God. I really don't want to get caught for the first time. It has been, you know quite some time since the game started so far, so if I do get caught, yeah, th that'll be kind of a disappointment, but kind of overdue. It doesn't look like he's waking up, though. I... <sighs> I'll chance it. Whoa! Whoa! Holy shit! did wake up for a second, and yawned. Oh. Okay. Well, now that that is over, <laughs> holy shit. Um. Oh, damn it. Okay, so I just picked up the SOCOM suppressor. Uh, speaking of which, let's, uh, let's talk to Nastasha about our SOCOM. Harsha. I found a SOCOM. That's a Special Operations Command pistol. It's a 45 caliber pistol with plenty of stopping power. It's also equipped with a LAM for nighttime combat. If you hold down the weapon button, you can train the laser sight on the enemy to help you aim. Indeed. If you find a SOCOM suppressor, you can equip that too. That pistol was designed specifically for a use by special forces, so I think it will be useful. Some people find it a little heavy and hard to use, but it shouldn't be a problem for you. Well, it is a 45 caliber, so... That's, uh... Oh, nice. I guess I already equipped the uh, suppressor on it. Did it auto-equip, or did I have the suppressor like in my inventory already. I don't know. Um, so now that I have the SOCOM suppressor, as I'm sure you can tell from the name SOCOM, I didn't even mention the FAMAS either. That's the assault rifle. Um, don't use it. I mean, unless you get caught. If you get caught, use it. There's your excuse. Or for boss fights and shit like that. But do not open fire on enemies. Uh, that's too loud of a fucking gun. But now that we have the suppressor, we can actually kill enemies. And it's it's not a it's not a good thing if you kill enemies, you know, for your end of game ranking. But honestly, I don't give a shit. 
My more pressing matter is not to get caught. If I can kill them from afar to save myself, uh, then I'm definitely going to do that. It's a tricky ass fucking camera sometimes. Alright, now, this was what I wanted. Very important. Cardboard box! <laughs> the signature item of Solid Snake. More than any weapon. Can, can anybody, like, talk about the box? Please? A cardboard box, huh? Just like Zanzibar. It saved my skin more than a few times in Outer Heaven, too. Getting the maximum use out of ordinary on-hand objects is the first principle of survival. It's especially important in covert operations. I haven't forgotten what you taught me. Alrighty. And... I believe Campbell says something as well. What have you got there? A cardboard box? Yeah. Remember that trick? That's the snake I remember. Those poor fools won't know what hit them. <laughs> what about you, Nastasha? I'm sure everybody has something to say about it. A cardboard box. A cardboard box usually consists of a thin pasteboard with a corrugated paper center. I is she actually gonna tell me? Recycled paper. Like the definition of a cardboard box over a hundred in the history. Ago. It was originally used to absorb one's sweat when wearing hats. With the what? same amount of wood to make one wooden box, you can make six or seven cardboard boxes. And since it's recyclable, it's highly economical. In addition, it's strong and easy to store. That's why it's widely used for packing. But to avoid damaging weapons and other delicate instruments when shipping them, they should be packed in stronger boxes like wood or something. Uh, really? Also, the crevices should be filled with styrofoam to prevent them from moving around. So, anyway, what's with the box? Oh, nothing. No big deal. <laughs> she went on that long tirade telling us what it is and its history. And, okay, whatever. Meryl, you got anything to say about it? I, I love the box. It's like it was my destiny to be here. In the box. A cardboard box? I heard stories from my uncle, but I always thought he was pulling my leg. I've got no comment. Oh, of course. Why do you take your mask off? The only people who can see you are the players. I mean, and... The soldiers you happen to be around, you know, keep your disguise on, Meryl. For God's sake, at least a cardboard box is better than you taking your fucking mask off. Oh, but anyways. This is... interesting. There is an important item on the second floor, but... The first floor, one of the first floor guards is actually moved to the second floor over there. And, I mean, unless I can, like... Yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, no chance in hell. <laughs> Doing a crack shot from 200 feet away, no fucking way. Not without first person mode. Alrighty. Ooh, boy. I didn't realize the guard was right there. Okay, enough fucking around. Uh, there is... Like I said before, this tank that was here is, is now missing. And that's no good. Uh, and I have a question. This was a level 5 card door. Okay. Codec call first. Be careful, Snake. That airlock is set with infrared sensors. You probably can't see them with your naked eyes, but there are infrared beams coming out of that wall. Touch any one of them, and the doors will seal off, and the place will be flooded with poison gas. Somehow, you've got to get through without setting off those sensors. All right. Now, there are two ways of us going about those sensors. Um, as I already showed you, the, the cigarette smoke, but we also have the thermal goggles. Uh, the cigarettes are probably the better method if you're not used to this because 
as you can see, it's kind of disorienting seeing those red lines. But you need to pay close attention to where they align. Be very careful. Don't make too many unnecessary movements. Alright. So... There's the infrared sensors. Uh, if you get caught by the beams, it's pretty much instant death. Uh, the, the room uh, closes up, there's no way to get out, and gas will pretty much stay in the room until it kills you. Now I have a question for you. This is a level 5 door that Meryl opened. This is a level 2 door. The what? Why? I, I question the redundancy of this, but whatever. Alrighty, so... Now that we have uh, Meryl in our codec list, we have somebody who knows the place. So we have boss strategies, we have saving the game, we have weapons uh, advice, we have survival advice, and we have advice on the base. So I mean, we, we got ourselves a full deck here. The only thing that we would need now is somebody to tell us about secret bullshit that we couldn't possibly know about, but wait! Snake, be careful. There are Claymore mines around there. Use a mine detector. Who are you? Just call me Deep Throat. Deep Throat? The informant from the Watergate scandal? <laughs> Never mind about that. You're not using burst transmission. Are you nearby? Listen, there's a tank in front of your position waiting to ambush you. Who are you anyway? One of your fans. One of my fans. All right. I'm seriously tempted to, like, edit in some kind of a, uh, like, instead of the static that ha ha shows up on Deep Throat's fucking, uh, codec picture, I'm seriously thinking about putting in Nick's and throwing up the double peace sign. <laughs> Deep Throat, huh? Strange. What's people got to say about that? I, I, I really apologize for going in-depth into the codec conversations, but... I find, you know, the customizability, well, not customizability, but just being able to access every nook and cranny, every conversation, I find it fascinating to do multiple times in this game. But anyways, what's Campbell got to say about Deep Throat? Colonel, I got a codec call from someone outside this operation. I know. We were monitoring the call. Mei Ling knows everything about the communication system, so let me have her explain it to you. Well, if somebody knows your frequency, they can call you. But the question is, how did he learn it? It's top secret information. So you mean someone leaked the information? That's the only explanation I can think of. Mei Ling, do you know where that transmission originated from? I'm sorry. The radio waves were too weak to locate their source. But I'm sure he's near you. Somewhere on the base. Snake, you'll have to go through the minefield to advance. Well, at least he told us that there's a minefield here. Uh, too bad I don't have a mine detector, but I do have thermals, so that's just as good. Master, does the name Deep Throat mean anything to you? <laughs> Deep Throat? What? You mean the guy from Watergate? No, but he uses the same name. Whoever he is, he's not part of our operation, but he's been giving me advice by codec. What? On top of that, he wasn't using burst transmission. It seems he was transmitting from somewhere on this base. Somewhere on the base? Yes. I have no idea who that could be. I see. Huh. Okay, what about Nastai? Well... Deep Throat is far before Meryl's time. The place is mined? Well, if you use a mine detector, you'll be able to see the mines displayed on your radar. Fuck that. If you need a mine detector, there should be one on the second floor of the tank hangar. Hang it, wait. D did her audio cut out at the end? Or was it just me? Whatever. Maybe they wanted to uh, expand the dialogue with Meryl there for a second, but they said, Nah, fuck it. We're, we're, we're two voice acting lines over budget, so they told Debbie Mae West to just stop. Nastasha, I'm sure you know who Deep Throat is. That area is mined? If you only had a mine detector. <sighs> After you locate the mines on your radar, 
crawl forward and retrieve them. Anti-personnel mines have killed over 20,000 non-combatants in the past 30 years. Damn, in countries she's... like Cambodia and Nicaragua, the killing and maiming of innocent victims continues long after the wars have ended. It is easy to plant mines, you see, but removing them is a different matter. It requires yeah, crawl more over time them. and manpower than anyone is willing to invest. The superpowers need to donate more mine detectors and other equipment to remove them. It is the least we could do after laying them. That is a very uh, true statement. I'm sure to this day there's still people getting blown up by mines in the jungles of Vietnam. Uh, so yes, I mean, this game brings up many, many moral questions and answers and whatnot. Uh, but, Nastasha, it makes no fucking sense to crawl on a mine. But, holy shit, I am close to it. But, you know, crawl over the mine and... There you go. Problem solved. And he says there's a tank waiting to ambush me as if the treads weren't, you know, indicative enough of that. As if the fucking uh, tank being missing from the tank hangar wasn't indicative enough of that. I love that attention to detail. So, like I said, the thermals make a, a, a decent alternative to the mine detector if you don't feel like going out of your way. I'll probably get it eventually, but... Um, the mine detector is just so much less advantageous to thermals because if you're if the radar is jammed, the mine detector is useless, and there's going to be a couple areas that are jammed that have mines later on. So uh, that being said, I don't see no cotton picking tank, but I hear a cotton picking tank. Dude, that's a tank shell. That's more than a message. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that wasn't a joke, dude. Oh, wait. That's right. You belong on the ground. You should crawl on the ground like the snake you are. Come, let's fight. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Alrighty. So... This is not necessarily a fight against Vulcan Raven as it is fighting against a fucking tank. A fucking tank. A fucking tank. Snake, look out for that tank's main gun. It'll pulverize you. To say the Should least. Be some way. Ask Nastasha. She knows everything there is to know about weapon systems. All right. So, since this is not necessarily a, a, a fight against a Foxhound member proper, uh, Nastasha's the one to talk to. That M1 tank is equipped with fucking M1 A1 Once Abrams. Once it locks onto a target, it automatically tracks it, and its main gun is effective up to 3,000 meters. To get close, you'll have to confuse the tracking system. Use your chaff. If you can jam the system and get close enough, it won't be able to use its main gun. Use your chaff at a long distance to fool its electronic systems. All right, thanks, lady. Miller, what do you got for me? What? No response. What, what, is the line busy? Are you talking to somebody else, McDonald? Or should I call you Kaz? <laughs> uh, Metal Gear fans will actually know what I'm talking about, but those who don't probably won't. So anyways, as uh, we've been told by Nastasha, the key to this fight is chaff grenades. Good thing we have six of them. It's more than enough. We only need to really throw one to get close to it. So, throw the chaff. Wait for it to blow. Alright, now the main gun can't hit us. Alright. Ugh! I'm on the wrong end of that gun. First things first, I want to use these claymores against it. If possible. You fucker. 
There we go! If you use the claymores, and I'm sure C4 works as well, but if you use the claymores, uh, you can actually disable the tank's treads, and that makes the second phase a lot easier. So since it's barely moving, I wasn't even touching it! This thing has a very weird hitbox. So throw grenades! That's right, grenades. As if that makes any fucking sense. See how you like this. You know, th this boss battle would be impossible if you guys just had the, the, the brain power to like keep the hatch closed. I don't know. Uh, bad grenade. All right. As you saw, and I'm getting fucking run over. You know, you're not even really touching me. Um, as you saw, I was able to, uh, do half of the gunner health just by, you know, bullseyeing it into the hatch. That's... am I... this is like the easiest fight in this fucking game. There we go! Almost did a fail. No, Fail would say he has no chaff grenades. Chaff ammo full, but I don't have any chaff grenades! <laughs> Whatever. Well, boss, I hope you are happy. You got the card. We'll play with him a little longer. You would be wise not to underestimate him. So, Liquid's in call with Raven, huh? He is just as you said. In battle, he is as if possessed by a demon. Much like you, I would expect no less. See? I told you so. But I will kill him. That's so, awesome. General I can't tell. Ivan, I hear he took your hand as well as your dignity. Watch your tongue, shaman. In the language of the Sioux people, Su means snake. It is known as an animal to be feared. Well, snake is mine now. When I meet him next, I'll take special care of him. Not yet. Don't kill him yet. He and I will meet again in battle. Same prediction as always? Yes. The raven on my head. It thirsts for his blood. Damn right! <laughs> uh, Metal Gear Awesome, for those of you who uh, have been living under a rock and don't know what that is. <laughs> um, if you are being exposed to this game's events for the first time, I would advise that you, you know, wait until after the playthrough to get acquainted with Metal Gear Awesome, but seriously, watch it. The snake crawls on the ground, but cannot scratch its back. I'm sure I'm, like, getting lines wrong somewhere. But... Again, our, our life is going up, and it's going up rather rapidly, and we have another slot for a ration now. Uh, our ammo capacity is going up, like, really exponentially every time. I mean, the first time it was like 25, after that it was like 40-something, or maybe 50, maybe 49, and now it's 73. So there is definitely uh, sort of a powering up that Snake goes through every time you beat a boss. A real boss, not that fucking alert phase bullshit when we were locked in the prison with Meryl. Anyways, um, I think this is a good stopping point. I know there wasn't really much progress made in the game proper, but I, I like to do all the extra codec conversations. Speaking of which, you got anything now for us, Miller? Alright, now you want to talk. Soldiers that have been forged in the fires of battle are used to catching naps whenever and wherever they can. There's a big difference between real soldiers and those kids who have only been trained in VR simulators. After playing for a long time, you should get some rest too. <laughs> well, I wouldn't necessarily call 34 minutes a long time, but I will take your advice, Miller, so let's save with Mei Ling. What is it, Snake? Save. We are in the Nuclear Warhead Storage Building. 
snake like Shakespeare said, not had all spent what our desire is got without content. Basically, it means that your desire can get you into trouble if you're not careful. That goes for items too. Don't get too greedy or you might be sorry. Be careful, snake. That goes right along with my not wanting to get the mind detector because I didn't want to run to run the risk of getting caught by that guard. I'm sure at some point I'm going to start killing people with, with my now silenced SOCOM, but uh, I think this is a good stopping point, guys. So, again, apologies if the codec might be a little bit of a turnoff for you, but I happen to love it. So I will catch you guys next time. Have a good day, everybody.